Hello, I'm Portia Young, and thank you for joining us for 1036 at our new time. Happy 2019 to all of you. We begin the new year with a look back at two stories we first told you about in 2018 that symbolized perseverance, courage, and hope for a better life. A couple hundred Congolese refugees now call Milwaukee home. But getting here has been an incredible journey. Ajimokano Zito and his wife Betty made their way to Milwaukee several years ago. They are now U.S. citizens. Zito, as he's called, has also worked to help other Congolese refugees start their lives here in Milwaukee. Meet the faces of a hope for tomorrow. I thank God all the time to see my children here. They can live in a country that they're safe. They can become someone. There is no hope for tomorrow in my country. Former refugee Edumakano Zito holds on tight to these tiny fingers. He loves being a father to his newborn son and to his two older children, King David and Davina. Zito, as he is often called, and his wife Betty are at peace, knowing their American-born children are much safer than they were as children living in the DRC in Central Africa. I was born in the Democratic Republic of the Congo but I didn't get a chance to live in my country because of the war. Back home, I know the friends of mine, we were in the same middle school. They're not, I mean, they were murdered. If you go back in Congo, oh my goodness, it's Blood everywhere. The bloodshed from armed conflict, political violence, and corruption has plagued the DRC for decades. From the early 1990s until about 2016, the Eastern Congo, where Zito and his wife are from, has been home to the world's deadliest war since World War II. The United Nations says seven million people were murdered during that time period. And we all know if the United Nations gives a statistic like that, we know it's more than seven million, for sure. The DRC's vast mineral wealth, including gold, tantalum, tungsten, and tin has fueled the fighting in the DRC. These minerals are used in cell phones and laptops. Armed groups use the profits from the sales for campaigns of violence, while the DRC's people continue to live in extreme poverty. Diamond, zinc, coltan, all of those minerals involved war in the country. So all the developed country need those resources to make companies run. But for us as Congolese, we never have hope and peace in our own country. 
a big United Nations force tries to keep the peace in the DRC, though conflicts continue. Children and families remain in harm's way, with many still facing starvation and sickness. The country's women and girls often become victims of sexual assault and rape. Zito knows that pain all too well. My mom was a victim of sex harassment and sex abuse in front of my eyes, which is something that I take painful in my life that I don't know how I can take it out. Heartache intensified when the ugliness of the Congo conflict devastated his family even more. My dad and my two sisters was murdered in front of my eyes. Then imagine that's life. It's hard. A young Zito went through therapy to help him cope. He still thinks about his father and his father's advice, especially now that he himself is a father to three young children. This is what he used to tell me. The future of any person depends on what you do today. So just focus on the education, make sure that you go to school, you can become someone. Zito and his family took that message to heart, escaping the Congo and traveling by boat for two days to a refugee camp, Nyarigusu, in Tanzania. Zito was only 10 years old, hoping for a better future to become that someone. We just live by the grace of God, that's what we said. And we still have hope that one day, things may change with faith, and as a Christian, we say we have hope in God. We made it. It's better to live in a camp than Congo because I mean, in the refugee camp, we were secured with the United Nations Commission of Refugees. In the point of security, yes, the camp was much better than Democratic Republic of Congo. But you don't have access to go outside. You have to live just in the camp. Zito, his mother, and younger brother and sister were among the approximately 150,000 refugees in this camp, the United Nations calling it one of the largest refugee camps in the world. They lived in unimaginable conditions over the course of 15 years. Just imagine you live in a country or in a camp, there is no electricity. There is no proper water that you can drink. We share water with animals. You have to wake up early in the morning, maybe 4, 5 a.m. to get water that you're gonna drink. Imagine you live in a place that sometimes it's four to five pounds of rice that you have to eat for two weeks. It's, 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 it's a hard life and everyone is stressed out, everyone is burnt out. Battling through the hardships, Zito received his high school diploma while in the camp. He also earned a college associate's degree, became a teacher, and a supervisor of a daycare. The camp is also where he met his future wife, Betty. Zito and his family eventually were asked to participate in the refugee resettlement program. The United Nations Refugee Agency oversees the process and identifies cases to be referred to resettlement countries. Refugees do not apply for resettlement themselves. Because of our story, because of the struggle that we have, they decided to give us a chance, a new hope, to move to the United States. The UN Refugee Office refers only the most vulnerable cases, refugees whose lives are in danger in their current host country. According to the UN, less than 1% of the world's refugees are ever resettled. When you start the process of resettlement, you don't choose and you don't know where you go. 48 hours of air travel later, Zito and his family arrived in their new hometown. I had a big expectation of me working with Wisconsin. I knew the way we read the United States on books up there, it's, it's like heaven, so you have everything. Then you get in Milwaukee something different. You know, it's cold, 
there is snow. You know, and I remember the first time when I saw snow, I was asking, I'm saying myself, what is this? So, you know, it was funny for somehow, but we thanks God we are here. When I came in 2012, I spoke Swahili, French, Lingala, Kibembe, and Chiluba. No English at all. I quickly learned English at MATC. I don't think I... I made it because I'm smart, but I believe it's by God's grace. Strong faith definitely lifts Zito's soul. And greatly influences his family life. We don't have another legacy to our children besides God. So we teach them how to be kind, how to pray, you know, how to be thankful to other people. A lesson learned and practiced at home and at Sunday services each week. Dear God, I did not sleep well last night, but I did wake up. God is a constant in his life. As a refugee case manager for Catholic charities in Milwaukee, Zito begins each workday with a prayer he keeps on his desk. I may not have all I want, but I have all I need. My life is not perfect, but my life is good. Appreciating the good life and the little things become even more important for Zito as he keeps an eye on what's happening in the Congo. He reflects on what could have been. Maybe how to be died already, I would not be alive. His new life in Milwaukee and in the United States became very real on March 22, 2018. He took another important step in moving forward and becoming that someone. Supporting him, his mother, children, and wife Betty, who took this very same step a year earlier. Raise your right hands and say after me that I will perform work of national importance. That I will perform work of national importance. Under civilian direction. Under civilian direction. When required by the law. When it requires by the law. That I take this obligation freely. And that I will take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion or a purpose of a situation. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Let's give a hand to these brand new Americans. Outstanding. Outstanding. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. I'm so, so excited. I never claimed myself as a citizen of any country, even though I was born in the Congo, but now, this is the time I can claim myself like I'm a citizen. My goal is to serve, protect, and respect the Constitution and laws of the United States. I believe this is a nation of immigrants and refugees. So together, we can move forward the country. Together, we can succeed. Together, we can make a better place to live for all the people. Every day I say hello to everybody and every day I say goodbye to everybody. Acknowledgement is extremely important. Good morning, Brandon. My name is Richard Spector and I'm a director of Troubadour Bakery. Jumbo. Jumbo happens to be Swahili for hello. Jumbo. Richard Spector happens to employ refugees from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. They join an already diverse workforce 
eager to welcome someone new. Jambo! Jambo! Ah, there it is! Fabian and his wife, Angelani, and Yvette and her daughter-in-law, Tabi, are among the 60 employees at Troubadour Bakery in Bayview, part of Colectivo Coffee. They have great smiles, and um, I can tell they're good people. <laughs> That's our weapon. That's our secret we have. It's smiling. So we feel happy for everything that they do for us. Edu Makano Zito has a great smile, too. He's an interpreter and former refugee case manager for Troubadour's refugees. He's also a former refugee from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He's now a U.S. citizen. We have almost the same story of life. I can help more than somebody else can because I know what they went through. Zito, as he is called, says he and his agency, Catholic Charities, help the refugees in all aspects of resettlement. We help them with employment, but we also have another our department that help refugees with cultural orientation and ESL because most of them, where they came from, they cannot speak English at all. 20, right, Yvette? 20 pieces? 20? 20. 20. Okay. It creates some challenges in that uh, sometimes, obviously, language is a challenge. There's some cultural differences, but it does provide a richness to the uh, working environment. You know, the richness also is, I mean, people just have different experiences, and uh, it, it forces people to communicate a little bit harder, which is, which is a good thing also. Cheat sheets offer helpful reminders, just in case. Good, Yvette? Angelani? Done? Good. Good. There's a lot of, like, body language and just working in each other's space that I think we've all gotten used to a little more, even if English isn't being spoken. Um, there's a lot we can communicate just by, you know, moving in and moving out. We didn't speak Swahili or French and they didn't speak English. It's been a long road. Spoken language isn't always tied into communication. Um, I think empathy has a lot to do with it. The jobs that they're doing, they're very teachable jobs. Most of the, the training is really through demonstration. I'm actually working alongside the refugees. When they first started, it was really confusing. Like, how do we explain to them how much of each fruit goes in a cup? So that's where I buckled down and I started weighing out every fruit. And we have all of our scoops with colors. They've come a long, long ways. It's exciting, I'm excited. I just want to tell them like, great job. And we can say that, it's Kazizuri. And so we've tried to make an effort in learning words like that. The first day they worked with me, I was able to, I drew some pictures and I was able to show them because I couldn't, I didn't know what to say to them. The most important thing for me is that uh, I want to make sure that everybody is set up for success and we're optimizing people's potential. That's really what gets me coming to work every day. I, I try to treat them like any other employee because I think that's important. And if someday they want to um, convey what life was like in the Congo, you know, I, I would love to listen. Listen carefully. The value of humanities does not exist in Congo for now. The country is not safe. People die every day. Women are sexually abused. They have no value as a human being in a cup. My 
beloved brother was murdered on my presence 1996. I thank God uh, on behalf of my family that um, no one in the family was kidnapped or killed, but we see our neighbors was killed in our presence. Uh, life for children in Congo at that time was hopeless. Fearless of everything. Um, children was living with no education. I don't think I should be alive if I was in Congo. The way we see in the I mean television, the way we listen to the radio, it seemed like our generation was ended in the Congo because of the war. Children the main target. It's crazy, yeah. We don't know what they want. <laughs> Tabi left the Congo when she was six years old. Then she spent 20 years in a secured refugee camp, but lived without electricity, clean running water, and little food. Fellow refugees Yvette and Fabienne experienced the same. I never have a thought that one day I will live long as I lived today. And I never thought that I can move in the United States. I never knew, I, didn't, I never even have an idea that how I can come in the US. Because the process of resettlement is so hard in a refugee camp. But I thank God, my family and I, we did it. Back at the bakery, co-workers are aware of what these refugees have endured. Just from personal experience, anytime I've seen the Congo in headlines, it's usually not a good headline. I just don't want them to come over here and make them feel that they're being treated the same way. You know, I want them to feel that they're loved, they're respected, and, you know, they have some type of work, you know, and make them know that it's, it's going to be all right. They do believe it's going to be all right. They came here to Milwaukee and to Troubadour, with a mix of unending hope, undying faith, and self-fulfilling dreams. We learn from the Bible, there is a time for everything. There's time of peace and time of war. There's time of joy, there's time of circumstances. If you learn that, in your mind you will say, I know it was a time. I must be joyful because I know God is on my side. sana <laughs> sana. You know, the life in the camp, we was dreamless. We never have a dream that we can think bigger. I never worked any hard job in my life. I was a nurse. I love to help people. If I can compare my life right now with collective where I work, bakery, it's a hard job. That's why I do my best. I want to go back to school to make sure that I do the job I want to do. I want to become an S. That's my dream. I'm so lucky to have that job. Number one, the job itself it's helped me to provide the basic needs to my children and my husband. The job helped us to pay rent and all the things that we need in the house. But also, the best thing is I make people live. When I do my job, people eat. I love everything. When I mean everything, it's because of the lifestyle that I was living in Africa. I was really poor, I was not able to provide anything for my family, but today I have the privilege that I can do anything for my family. At the end of the day, we're still all the same. We still have tremendous amount of potential. We all still deserve respect, and with that respect and, and treating each other positively, that should help overcome most challenges, quite honestly. These refugees would most likely agree. 
There have been some new developments since these stories first aired. All of the refugees seen in the Troubadour story continue to work toward U.S. citizenship. Fabian continues to take English language classes here at MATC. Catholic Charities of Milwaukee has discontinued its refugee resettlement program due to declining numbers of refugees. Zito formed a foundation, the Zito Foundation, to help orphaned children and abused women back at his former refugee camp in Tanzania. He visited the camp in December, bringing with him several laptop computers to help kids learn technology. He also held workshops on domestic violence and child abuse. Zito talks about his journey back to Tanzania and his reunion with a couple of special young men in a Milwaukee PBS documentary that will air in the near future. Stay tuned for more details on that. Let us know what you think about the stories seen here on 1036. Call us at 414-797-3760. Plus, share your story ideas with us as well. That's 414-797-3760. And remember, you can always check us out at milwaukeepbs.org and on Facebook. 1036 returns next month, February 21st at 7.30 p.m. right here on Milwaukee PBS Channel 10. We'll see you then.